the ancient Shastra that fears which lie behind the experience of the present and which has made the man what he is today. These conditioning factors can usually be traced back to the subconscious by the process of unearthing the past, of taking into consideration the present environment, of reckoning with heredity, and of studying the effects of education, either academic or based upon life itself. Then the factor which has been a major handicap, and which has turned the man into a psychological problem, is brought with his assistance, if possible to the surface of his consciousness, is then intelligently explained and related to the existing condition, and the man is consequently brought to an understanding of his personality, its problems and its impending opportunity. The spiritual technique, however, is entirely different. The personality problem and the process of delving into the subconscious are ignored, because the conditions which are undesirable are. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 72 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Regarded as the result of lack of soul contact and of soul control. The patient, if I might so call him, is taught to take his eyes, and consequently his attention, away from himself, his feelings, his complexes and his fixed ideas and undesirable thoughts, and to focus them upon the soul, the divine reality within the form, and the Christ consciousness. This could well be called the process of scientific substitution of a fresh dynamic interest for that which has hitherto held the stage. It brings into functioning activity a cooperative factor whose energy sweeps through the lower life of the personality and carries away wrong psychological tendencies, undesirable complexes, leading to erroneous approaches to life. This eventually regenerates the mental or thought life, so that the man is conditioned by right thinking under the impulse or the illumination of the soul. This produces the dynamic expulsive power of a new affection, the old it age fixes, the old depressions and miseries, the hindering and handicapping ancient desires. These all disappear, and the man stands free as a soul and master of his life processes. I have discussed these two conditions at length because it is essential that another law and then healing be understood before we proceed any further. The discussion about the split personality, the problems of the mystic and the new mode of approach to disease, from the soul angle and the realm of causes, instead of from the personality angle and the realm of effects, can clarify this law in your minds and indicate at least its reasonableness and its valuable application to human needs. Law IV Disease, both physical and psychological, has its roots in the good, the beautiful and the true. It is but a distorted reflection of divine possibilities. The thwarted soul, keeping full expression of some divine characteristic or inner spiritual reality, produces within the substance of its sheets a point of friction. Upon this point the eyes of the personality are focused, and this leads to disease. The art of the healer is concerned with the lifting of the downward focused eyes unto the soul, the healer within the form. The spiritual or third eye then directs the healing force, and all is well. P. Diseases of Disciples We will divide what we have to say and then the diseases of disciples into two parts the specific problems of all disciples, and the difficulties incident to soul contact. We need here to remember that all disciples are susceptible to the major categories of disease. 
They are attempting to be one with all humanity, and this includes, therefore, all the ills to which flesh is heir. They may not, however, succumb to the frailties of the ordinary man, and should remember that diseases of the heart and of the nerves constitute their major problem. In this, Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 73 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Connection It might be pointed out that the disciples are found in two major groups. Those who live above the diaphragm and who are, therefore, prone to heart diseases, the thyroid and throat troubles, and those who are in process of transferring the energies of the centers below the diaphragm into the centers above the diaphragm. Most of these at this time are transferring solar plexus energies into the heart, and the world agony is profoundly hastening the process. Stomachic, liver and respiratory troubles accompany this transference. 1. The specific problems of disciples. These special problems are, as you know, peculiar to those who have lifted themselves in consciousness out of the life of the personality into that of the soul. They are primarily related to energy, its inflow, its assimilation or non-assimilation, and its rightly directed use. The other ills to which all flesh is heir at this time in human evolution, for it must be remembered that diseases vary according to the point in evolution and are also cyclic in their appearance, and to which disciples can and do succumb, are not dealt with here. Suffice it to say that the three major diseases of humanity to which reference has been made take their toll of disciples, particularly in bringing about the liberation of the soul from its vehicle. They are, however, little as it may appear, controlled in these cases from soul levels, and the departure is planned to take place as a result of soul decision, and not as a result of the efficiency of the disease. The reason that these three major diseases, indigenous to the planetary life in which we live and move and have our being, have this power over disciples is that disciples are themselves an integral part of the planetary life, and in the earlier stages of their recognition of this unity they are prone to fall a ready prey to the disease. This is a fact little known or realized, but explains why disciples and advanced people are susceptible to these diseases. We could divide these problems into four categories. 1. Those which are connected with the blood or with the life aspect, for, the blood is the life. These have specific effect upon the heart, but usually of a functional nature only. Organic disease of the heart arises in more deeply seated causes. 2. Those which are a direct effect of energy, playing upon and through the nervous system, via the directing brain. 3. Those which are related to the respiratory system and have an occult source. 4. Those which are specifically due to the receptivity or the non-receptivity, to the functioning or the non-functioning, and to the influence of the center. Necessarily, these fall into seven groups, affecting seven major areas of the body. For the average disciple, before there is complete soul control and monodic direction, the major directing agent, via the brain, is the vagus nerve, along with the energies entering via the head center are distributed to the rest of the body. A definite science of the centers and their relation to Kundalini has been built up by a certain powerful esoteric school in the Orient. It has in it much truth, but also much error.
Copyright Copyright 1998 Rufus Trust 74 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing I have differentiated between problems and physical reactions and disease because the inflow, distribution and direction of energy do not necessarily produce disease. Always, however, during the novitiate which precedes all the initiation, they do produce difficulties and problems of some kind or another, either within the consciousness of the disciple or in his relation to those around him. Hence his environment is affected, and consequently his own reciprocal action. It should be remembered in this connection that all disciples are energy centers in the body of humanity and are in process of becoming points of focus, directed energy. Their function and activity always and inevitably produce effects, results, awakenings, disruptions and reorientations in the lives of those around them. In the early stages, they produce this unconsciously, and hence frequently the results on those they contact is not desirable, nor is the energy wisely directed, deflected or retained. Intelligent intent must lie behind all wise direction of energy. Later, when they are learning consciously to be and are becoming radiatory centers of healing force, consciously directed, this informing and then transmitted energy is more constructively employed along both psychological and physical lines. Nevertheless, in any case, the disciple becomes an effective influence and can never be what is esoterically called, unnoticed in his place and minus impact on other souls. His influence Emanation and forceful energy inevitably produce problems and difficulties for him. These are based on the human relations which he has karmically established and the reactions of those he contacts, either for good or for ill. Essentially the influence of a disciple of the Great White Lodge is fundamentally good and spiritually conditioning superficially and in its outer effects, particularly where the disciple is concerned, difficult situations, apparent cleavages and the emergence of faults as well as virtues upon the part of those affected make their appearance, and often persist for many lives, until the person thus influenced becomes what is called, occultly reconciled to the emanating energy. Ponder on this. The adjustment has to come from the side of those influenced, and not from the disciple. Let us now consider the four problems from the psychological angle, not the physical. A. The problems arising from the awakened heart center of the disciple are perhaps the commonest and frequently some of the most difficult to handle. These problems are based on living relationships and the interplay of the energy of love with the forces of desire. In the early stages, this inflowing love force establishes personality contacts which appear between the stages of wild devotion and utmost hate on the part of the person affected by the disciple's energy. This produces constant turmoil in the disciple's life, until he has become adjusted to the effects of his energy distribution, and also frequent disruption of relationships and frequent reconciliation. When the disciple is of sufficient importance to become the organizing center of a group, or is in a position to begin to form, esoterically, his own ashram prior to taking some of the major initiations then the difficulty can be very real and most disturbing. There is, however, little that can be done by the disciple, except to attempt to regulate the outgoing energy of love. B. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust
75.